Welcome back to the round table. I'm Ostrich Fox. With the first season of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power Out, the franchise has garnered a lot of new fans. Fans who might be curious to check out the original. And when they do, they may go, what the heck? Why does everyone look different in the new one? On the flip side, fans of the original 80s She-Ra may look at the new one and go, ew, why does everyone look different? There's actually been a lot of controversy surrounding this ever since the show was revealed. That the redesigns of all the characters, and even changing the races, ethnicities of characters, is to serve nothing more than SJW pandering. Which, if diversifying what was formerly an all-white cast is pandering, then you just don't live in modern times. At least this roster of characters has some realism to it, which actually plays a role in the redesigns. Why were these characters updated and look different? Well, there's three major reasons. Toy modes. Toys, toys, toys. Now, like most animated series in the 80s and 90s, She-Ra and He-Man existed to sell toys. And to make companies wads and wads of cash. And what better way to sell toys to girls than having a variety of princesses that kick major booty. But here's the thing, since these toys had to be mass produced, they had to be produced relatively uh, cheap, leading only to one main toy mold to be made. So when designing characters of the show, the original series had to follow specific guidelines in order to ensure that it would fit the toy mold leading to a lot of character designs being restrictive and only really having differences in their hair and different variations of their outfit. It was restrictive, it oppressed creativity, and really, it led to a Ninja Turtles effect, where the princesses could only really be told apart by their colors. Now, obviously, if you grew up with the original series, you're gonna know them from memory, but take a shot of the princesses from the original and put it in black and white. How are you gonna tell these characters apart? I weep for those who still have black and white TV in the 80s. Anyways, the new series does not have this restriction. They don't have to follow toy modes. This allows them to express themselves and give each character their own unique look instead of the same face that the original suffered from. But reason number two, it's a coming of age story and they want their characters to look their proper ages. No matter what you say, the original cast of Shira look like grown adults. There's just no arguing there. That right there could be someone's mama. While in the new series, they're princesses, not queens. So of course they're gonna look their age and not come across as developed. They either haven't hit puberty yet or are going through it, or they, namely Adora, just won't have the same body type as their original counterpart. Not at any point watching the show did I think Adora was anything but a girl. Because the show is marketed towards kids, they need kids to relate to the character. And it's harder for younger kids to relate to older characters, or characters that look older than they really are. So aging them down and making them look younger was a good call. And last but not least, these different characters and body types is, well, just more realistic. Which is crazy to say in a world where one of the characters is literally half cat, and they all have different magical powers and a magic flying horse, yada yada yada. But really, think about it. In the original, all the princesses were pale. They were around the same height, the same build, which was again due to toy modes, but they're from different kingdoms, different walks of life. Of course they're going to look different from one another. It'd be weird if they went to different kingdoms and everyone looked alike. Here, the kingdoms reflect different cultures, different clothing, different body types, different skin tones, because just like in the real world, they're in different environments, different conditions to grow in, access to different things. And while I know some characters like Spinnerella get backlash for looking out of shape, how is she gonna have powers and be active yet look like that? Again, they're teenagers, they're princesses, they're growing into their proper roles. You can't really base all these characters as if they're always going to be engaged in combat and action and that they have all their life. Season 1 is about forming the Princess Alliance, getting other princesses involved into the rebellion. They haven't known violence all their lives. It's only now they're getting involved into the conflict with Glimmer, with Adora, and will become more active, have more control over their powers and abilities as the series progresses. Not to mention genetics. What if your father or mother is big bone? What if they both are? Chances are you're going to inherit that. Guys, I live in America. If I go to Australia, I'm gonna be surrounded by tall people. Well, taller than the people already around me because I'm a shorty. If I go to countries with hotter climates, with much more sunlight, chances are I'm more likely to run into someone with a darker complexion. Or a really nice tan. Because again, they grew up with certain conditions and factors into the environment they live in. The co-creator of She-Ra even gave their blessings on these new designs. They're down for it. I know change is hard, especially when it's something you grew up with. 
you don't see why it needs to be changed or updated for a modern time. Why can't they just come up with something new? So I truly feel for fans of the original who aren't down with this new series, but blaming it and chalking it up to HAW propaganda or just bashing it because it's inherently different isn't the way to go. It's not healthy. But for those who do keep an open mind or are just new to the franchise, what do you think of the redesigns? Maybe you did go into it with no bias and you just didn't feel it. It just wasn't your show. You just didn't like the look of it. That's fine. Let us know in the comments below or tweet your thoughts to me at Arshabots or at Roundtable Vids. We're also on Instagram. If you want to have the Roundtable Girl, you can either become a member of this channel or support us on Patreon. Get access to exclusive perks. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please order to like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications to stay in the loop with all things animation. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Arshabots out.